Hello again everybody, this is the Pencrest High School AP Physics 1 video series. This is video 1i, vertical motion and free fall. Now lots of good news with uh, this one. The only difference between vertical and horizontal kinematics is the sign convention. We're familiar with the horizontal sign conventions, right is positive and left is negative. When we consider vertical motion, very simply, up is positive and down is negative. Makes sense to you. Uh, the formulas and their usage are exactly the same in vertical motion as they were in horizontal. Keep in mind that this sign convention applies to all three vector quantities that are involved. That is uh, position, velocity, and acceleration. Time, of course, behaves the same way vertically or behaves the same way in vertical problems as it does in horizontal problems. <clears throat> now the most common application of vertical kinematics is uh, free fall. Objects are said to be in free fall when they're under the influence of gravity only. <clears throat> Any object that is thrown, projected, or dropped is typically in free fall. This excludes things like rockets, which are usually powered, at least uh, until they run out of fuel. For the time being, we're going to restrict our analysis to objects that only move vertically. Uh, we'll look at free-fall projectiles that have horizontal motion uh, a little later on. So we're going to talk a little bit about gravity. Uh, this is a term that most people are familiar with. Um, when asked, people would probably say something like gravity is what makes things fall when you drop them. Uh, this is a reasonable explanation, but uh, we're going to look uh, a little more closely at it. Uh, for our present purposes, we're going to consider the acceleration due to gravity in a kinematics perspective. Uh, we're going to look at why things accelerate downward later on in the course. <clears throat> now, most of our problems that we solve are going to take place on the surface of the Earth. Um, the local acceleration due to gravity is taken to be a constant unless otherwise uh, specified. This acceleration due to gravity is given the symbol lowercase g. It's not a capital G. Capital G has a completely different meaning. Uh, we will get to it a little later on, so they are not interchangeable at any time. So the lower, so lowercase g acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared, probably a number you're familiar with. Um, most people are. In reality, it varies a little bit over the surface of the Earth, uh, including the local density of the Earth's crust, the elevation, the latitude, and so on. For the sake of making calculations, you can use this value for any free fall problem. Okay? <clears throat> At times, particularly on the AP exam multiple choice section, you'll be permitted to use lowercase g equals negative 10 meters per second squared in order to simplify your calculations. Um, <clears throat> however, when you're doing your homework in WebAssign, you always want to use negative 9.8 unless otherwise told. Now, I want to take a look at what this negative sign means. Uh, there is some controversy associated with including it. Uh, the value of the acceleration due to gravity, the magnitude of course does not have a negative sign. The sign is used to comply with standard sign conventions because the acceleration due to gravity always points down. Okay? Even when the object is moving upward, if it's in free fall, the acceleration due to gravity always points down. So this is the reason for including a negative sign for the time being. Now we're going to look at uh, a couple of different types of vertical free fall objects. We can have objects that are dropped or thrown. Uh, we're going to look at the dropped ones first. Uh, typically an object is dropped from some height above the ground, otherwise it's not a whole lot of fun. A typical problem might look like this. The ball is dropped vertically downward from the edge of a cliff of a known height. <clears throat> we're asked about the 
time it takes for the ball to land and we're asked about the final velocity as the ball lands. So superficially it might look like you only have one piece of data uh, and there's not enough to solve the problem. Uh, there are two things we do know that are not stated but implied by the nature of a free fall problem. First of all, the acceleration of the object is the acceleration due to gravity, therefore negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And two, the object is dropped. This means that the initial velocity is zero. Anytime an object is dropped, its initial velocity is zero. Now, here are the kinematics tables uh, initially set up. <coughs> we can arrange this uh, either of two ways. Uh, we do need to establish where the origin is. We could put the origin at the top of the cliff where the ball is dropped from, or we could establish the origin at the base of the cliff, which is where the ball lands. Um, in, the, in the first case, we have the origin established at the initial position of the object. So this is at the top of the cliff. When it lands, we know it's going to be, this is the given cliff height, 202 meters. We know it's going to be 202 meters below where it started. So then the final position would be negative 202 meters. It's dropped, so the initial velocity is zero, and we know the acceleration. We have our four, and we're going to solve for the other two. In the other case, again, we've uh, simply put the origin at the base of the cliff where the where the ball lands so that's its final position in that case its initial position would be 202 meters above where it, where the origin is so positive 202 the other two are the same and we again solve for V and T uh, what we'll find is that uh, we would get the same result <clears throat> now a couple of words of caution when we talk about the final velocity of something that's dropped, this is the velocity of the ball just as it lands. It's not, after it lands, it's not going to be zero, okay, because the ball is going to be moving as it reaches the bottom of the cliff. Once it hits the base of the, of the cliff, then it's no longer in free fall. So we're looking at just as the ball, just as it hits the ground. Um, you may be tempted to use the third kinematics formula to determine the final velocity because we have initial velocity A and we have the um, initial and final positions. Um, if you do, this quantity, which is the displacement, is going to be negative, and the A we know is negative. So this will produce a positive quantity. The V0 V is 0, this is going to go away. So we're going to have a positive quantity here. And <clears throat> then you take the square root to solve for the final velocity. It's easy to forget that when you take the square root of a positive number, the answer is plus or minus whatever the square root is. In this case, the physical situation demands that you select the negative of the square root. And again, that's knowing that the ball is moving with a velocity downward when it lands. So the sign convention tells us that it's negative. We, technically, we have two answers here, positive and negative. We select the negative one because it makes physical sense. Now, uh, we can also have an object that is thrown or projected up or down and then is in free fall. Uh, when we treat the kinematics of uh, thrown objects, the kinematics only apply after the object leaves the launcher. So if we're launching it, if we're using a cannon or a gun, or we're throwing it, uh, the kinematics only applies after it leaves the launcher. Now if the object is thrown downward, it'll have an initial velocity that's negative, typically given, not always. Um, otherwise, the treatment is very similar to an object that is dropped. Okay. However, if the object is thrown upward, it's going to go up for a little while, it's going to reach a high point, it's going to stop briefly, and it's going to fall back down. In such a case, we need to separate the motions into an up and a down and treat the kinematics for the up and the down separately. Okay, The down motion immediately follows the up motion, 
So the principles of multiple motions apply here also. Okay, so here's a typical example. Again, we have a cliff of known height, 122 meters. That's the H in the diagram here. We're given the initial velocity, it's upward. The ball's going to go up, reach a high point, and then come back down and land at the base of the cliff. Uh, we could conceivably place the origin here at the edge of the cliff, or we could put it down at the base of the cliff here. Um, for our purposes here, we're going to use the edge of the cliff here. So this will be our origin. So here's our setup. Again, we have the kinematics quantities and we have an up column and a down column. The up and the down columns are successive motions. The down follows the up. We do have enough in the up column to, to do the kinematics here. We've got four values. We know that the initial position is zero, the edge of the cliff. The initial velocity is given. And also, when the, when the up motion ends is when the object reaches its highest point. It's going to stop briefly. So the final velocity in the up column is going to be zero. It's going to stop briefly here, and then it's going to come back down, and we go to the down column. Okay? The object is moving up, but it's still subject to a gravitational acceleration downward, negative 9.8. Now, once we do the kinematics, solve for the final position, solve for the time. The down follows the up, so the principles of multiple motion apply. We're going to take this final position in the up column, and it goes immediately into the down column. Notice that, again, we have an initial velocity of 0 meters per second because the down follows the up, so the, initial, the final velocity in the up column goes into the initial velocity in the down column. We also know that when it lands, it's going to land whatever the cliff height is, which is given, it's going to land that far below the origin. So we have a negative 122 for the final position, which makes sense because it lands at the base of the cliff. So now we're going to have enough to do the down column. All right. And don't forget, once again, that the final velocity uh, will certainly be negative because it's, again, just as it lands. A problem of this type might ask you something about the total time of flight or the total time that the ball is in the air. This would be the time in the up column plus the time in the down column. These would be the total time that the ball is in the air. All right. That'll do it for vertical motion and free fall. Till next time, I'll see you again soon.